Headspace versus mm -hmm. Headbane. Yeah. Yeah, if you already play it. Or let me check. I'll look at the WCS qualifier replays to see if I have any. Oh. Yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, um. First Mecha Risk Bio. I don't um, know. We can. What do you want to see? Uh, let's do. You guys pick. I don't know. Can you make me party leader? Um. <clears throat> Yo, Charlie, could you read by me? Yes. Actually, this this um this Who mech game was really bad, but it shows you an easy way to beat mech players. If you want to see how to beat mech players without actually doing anything. Who wanted a reinvite? Hello. I'm just listening. You don't have to reinvite me. Oh, who does need to be invited? Yeah, someone yeah. just said it's for a uh, reinvite. Yeah, it was Evo. Can someone suggest them to the party? I just okay. did. Okay. So actually, we can do both of these. I just want to go over the mech one quick to show you some silly way to mech. I, I talked about this way earlier. I just want to show you like, what it looks like. Because it might look like he didn't play smart in this game, but this actually happens quite often when I play mech. Oh, intense. Yeah. This is no. This is the WCS. You. This is the WCS qualifiers. Game shooter. Right. Like third round, like round of eight or something. Yeah, I've seen this match. This game. It wasn't a very good game, but it shows you how to kill my players. Yeah, if... I think intense's biggest weakness is his TPT. I think it has a lot of flaws in it. That's always good. I regret rage quitting. Can never be sad about that. So I see. Um, I see the reactor. So even though command center was late, it still wasn't that, Which means I didn't keep the order. I when I when I see four marines, I usually think this is usually like a hellbound push or something. This can actually just make two marines, but if they make four. Uh, yeah, chance yeah. It's hard to tell what they're doing off a of one reaper. Well, I did get to see a star port, so I was thinking it could be like a hell up push or, or some sort of drop because he wasn't. I don't know if I saw this, but usually it's not a banshee off a one reaper opening because banshees are just better if you have three reapers in fast. Um, yeah, what I do is I check the edges. I don't suicide the overlords, but I, I check, I go on and see what I can without losing the overlords. So I like having the bottom one to check against the second gas, which I did see. And the top one, like, see, is, like, I saw the starport there. And I don't, there's no risk of losing the overlords, so it's always good. I double check, I did not see a reactor, a uh, tech lab in the starport, so I'm not worried about not worry about quick banshees. I made a spine just because I thought it could be a whatever. Yeah, you should. I used to keep like two on guard for some reason. It's just a habit. But yeah, if you don't know what's happening, a spine can always be nice at the front. Like. If I didn't have that, I don't think my building could have been ready in time, so it's always good. Then I moved it to my main base, because usually if they do a build like that, they'll follow up with some drops at your, third, at your main or your third. I think I killed the right back though and went into Vikings. You are ahead at this point, though, right? Uh, yeah, I, I feel like I am, because I stopped the push, I didn't lose any drones, I didn't have to lose one. Game Later before one one. That's a good question. It depends. It depends. If if they're doing like a really Yeah, I used to do one one for there all the time. I do layer first a lot of the time nowadays. But if I see they're being them being greedy, like if I see them being really greedy, if I see faster CC, if I see faster eBay, if I don't see like a quick attack, 
if I feel like I can get away with it, I'll still go double evil first and maybe do a 2 2 timing attack. Because if you get 1 1 before layer, usually you can get 2 2 before the turn gets 2 2 and you can do a 2 2 timing attack. Game Otherwise, if you get layer first, then you can't do a 2 2 timing attack. That's usually. I think Intense is being way too passive. She didn't go pain, she didn't make more hellions. This allows her to drone up, take a fourth base on punish. There's nothing can do to punish her right now because. Yeah, way too defensive. that's true, but at the same time, he lost his hell that push, and after that, it's really hard for him to do any follow up. Like, if he goes banshees after that, like, they're not going to be that effective because he has nothing to support them. Like, if you have a Hellion Banshee does usually give enough to let that the Zurich does have to make extra lines and just can't draw enough freely. It does if you do it straight away. Like, if he went straight up Hellion Benji off the opening. That's definitely the case. But with the Hellbot push, it's he would have like if Banshees and the extra Hellions would be so late that I wouldn't really care about them. I'd have like I I'd just have my queens and maybe a few Zerglings and I'd be fine. It's yeah, it, it definitely is different if they went straight up Hellions and Banshees. And he was just keeping pressure with that. Then you do have to play different. And um, you'd make like a spore for base, a spore at the front. Keep like your queens together and maybe make some banelings just so you can't run out of planes. But make players like Gumio, uh, Beyond 4GG, if they're all about push fails, they often go greedy or just continue the aggression. But... Intense isn't really going that greedy and playing saves is actually very far behind as it just takes a fourth base and then approach hydro push would be very hard to defend. Well they're always behind if they fail their hellbot push. Like they can't be if they're super greedy and the Zerg attacks, they're just gonna die if they fail the hellbot push first. And same thing, like if they're aggressive afterwards, it's not gonna be a strong attack because they wasted their first attack. So their follow up is never gonna be as strong as if they didn't lose a hell of a push. Like, it depends how much damage he did, and all he did was kill the few Zerglings and a few banelings. Like, he didn't... He just lost. It's even. And if I'm being defensive, I'll always take that. I'll always take an even trade if I have a fast start and he did a two-base push. But maybe he could have been more greedy with the third. I don't know. I don't know. It depends. I, I don't want to go over that specific because... I don't think, I don't know how good of a mech um, player intense is, honestly. I haven't played against him very much, so I don't know if he's playing this. This third? Yeah, the positioning is very abusable. If you break down the rocks, you can attack from both positions. Then the natural can also be open, so you have to commit some siege tanks to defend the natural. It's overall aggressive, but it's bad for mech. Especially when he's playing as defensive as he is. But it allows you to put the tank there. It's similar as like a Catalina. Catalina. You can defend your third and your main base with a tank. And if I have my tank here, if he has this tank there, I can defend the third. Even if he doesn't have enough granules to shape defend this. Because if he took his third up here right now, like he doesn't have enough granules to hold that even against the green lane. If you see what I mean. Like it's easier to defend this even though it's more exposed. Just because the tanks are there. Until I read it out, it's, it's much safer for him to have a tank there. And I'd rather if he had his third base up there. Well, you can't really move it. Because you need to make turrets there. You want to make a bunker there usually. And you want to make a, seat, a depot wall. But at the same time, I don't really feel like this base is that much more exposed. Just because if you have tanks lining the high ground and your natural base, it's fairly safe. Um, and you could also... Yeah... Also, yeah, it is an easier push for them to attack into your 4th base if you take your 4th here. Like, it's such a short distance on this map, especially. I think the problem with this game is he went into these 5 Vikings early. Maybe because he thought I was going quick mutas, but... Which I might have done... The, yeah, because I went 2 base muta the game before against him. So, he did make the Vikings too quickly, and I think that wasn't an optimal choice, just because it gave him a smaller ground army. So he yeah, defend at this point... Point you should have like 12 hellbats, and then just now you should be starting uh, Thor and uh, Vikings because on yeah, this two base yeah. meter, 
I mean, but, you don't have to worry about me the time until roughly 11 to 12 minutes. The game before, this is a series on WCS Qualifiers, and the game before I did go to base meter, though. So that's probably why he was worried about it. But I agree with you. I think these Vikings are very unnecessary for him. And if he had, like, yeah, Hellions or tanks, it would have been better. Or, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, he also didn't have the start part very early because he was doing the Hellbot push with the meta back. But he maybe could have used it to make add ons with the factories or something rather than making all these useless Vikings. And I personally think Banshee helps uh, because if they do a Roach push, that helps anyways. And later on, your Vikings can snipe the Overseers and then the Banshee's gone contested. <laughs> Yeah, 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 as I was saying, um, Hellion Banshee, of course, it's great when you're going to mech, but it's different when you fail a Hellbot push because the timing of the Banshee is just going to be so late. Like, even if you're just going Viking into Banshee, it's a lot later and it's a lot weaker than going straight up Plug Banshees. It just, like, every second that it's a the attack is later, it just becomes so much weaker, especially when the Zerg is going to mute us. Because Maybe he would have had one or two Banshees by now, but he lost all his Hellions, so I have my Queens to defend. And I have Creep Up because he lost the such push, so he couldn't deny that with the Hellions, if you see what I mean. Like, I, I would not be worried at all about Hellion Banshee after the first push. To be honest. But what I'm doing this game is... Um, I'm just going... Mass Mira, Mass Mira, and I like to do the mech all the time. Well, that was not ideal. Um, Does it work for Sabalo? Well, Avalo is different. Game is easy to do. Avalo doesn't. He doesn't move out of his base ever, <laughs> and he makes like a hundred turrets. But at the same time, if you play properly, anything works against Avalo, because he never takes his third base until fifteen minutes or something silly. So you can just be greedy and do whatever you want. And then kill him. If you know it's not a so it's always a free one. Because all you have to do is uh, scout with your SCVs. He'll go gas first, trying to go blind. Banshees, but if he gets scouted, he does this Hellion drop, which is an auto counter to any yeah, uh, Hellion elevator drops. Very mm. predictable. So I'm. So this style I mentioned um, at the start when we were talking about how to build mech, and it's you go upgrade your mass meters behind, and at the same time I'm not listening to my own advice for some reason. I shouldn't have all this tech right here. Like he, if he scans and he did, he saw the double spire, so he probably could have prepared for it if he was thinking. So that was kind of silly for me to make the second fire in my main base. Yeah. But the thing about this fire is, um, first time, if he does a push like this, it's never going to work for him. He has, what, three well, doors? Three doors, yeah. Yeah, so he wasn't, and I do this, even if they got like eight doors, it can work. As long as you magic blocks your meat as well, you can just, um, yeah, yeah, creep is nice, for sure. I always move up with five fours, number three, lost a lot of games to me, it's because of having only three fours. But even, like, if you look at this, I have uh, 25 meters, I'm going to have five more, so I'm going to have 30 meters. And 30 meters with, um, what upgrades? Plus one upgrades against a plus one Mac Terran, he'll never win the fight with the Thors. If I he also has correctly. no fourth, so this is where basically he has to do a lot of damage or he's basically lost the game because he's not going to be able to afford to trade anymore. Yeah, yeah, he has to, he does have to do damage with this. And this is kind of a, um, a normal ish attack. Of course, it would be nice for him to have more Thoris and be a little earlier, but he was kind of behind. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I do, even if they're going like 8 doors, you can even win this fight. Just by magic boxing correctly, as long as they don't have a lot of wooden mines and stuff too, you're like, you're good. 
And Game at Ishi Tong Even if they go widow mines, if you have like overload speed or something, you can just run overlords over the widow mines. And Thor's is uh, forever. Mean, hmm? Like Mario style, where you go widow mine pushes. Yeah, if you have like a widow mine Thor tank combat composition against. If I'm going to mass meter like this, like this, and it's obviously harder to engage because even if you magic fox the metas, they still take a ton of damage from widow mines. So, if I'm doing this style and I see a lot of widow mines, what I like to do is fly like overlords with overlord speed over the widow mines, and they just take forever to kill by Thors because Thors only do plus damage against light air units. They do like a quarter damage or something to non light air units. So, yeah, and they either have to unbro other widow mites and then you find with the meters or the widow mites waste shots on the overlords. But I do like this style because most Terrans will end up moving up with a push like this. With a few Thors, usually, as you said, it's usually more like five Thors or even up to eight Thors, depending on what they see. But they usually do a push like this when they get maxed. Maybe they'll be taking a fourth at the same time, usually. But if they ever do a push like this and you're going mass meter, you just get a free win. Because you just magic fog. Like, this isn't even really close. I could have waited longer if I wanted it. But, like, say if you had five doors here, I would have lost, like, I don't know, two more meters. Oh, I don't get it. Because it's not something to stab him with his stand and he had two spires, so why did he move up with only three doors? This seems very. Mm hmm. He could have thought I was going for doors, honestly, but I do agree it's not a. It wasn't a great choice to move out there. He should have just made a fourth base. But this is like the only game where we get the fourth. I beat MMA with this, I beat off the with this. I've been doing this for like years and it's always worked for the most part. Unless, unless they know you're going to do it and prepare for it. Like, unless they know you're trying to do this sort of thing, they fight against it before. Chance you save a really hard time. Sort of because most people don't ever do this because we're both into a Tiger Viper or into Bird or into whatever. But I try to speed this up. Yeah, yeah, and if they're going like a hairstyle, what people used to do was they would go Muta Stormhost, which is really good against Channel Mech because Stormhost, you can make like a. Yeah, yeah Snoo did that. Lots of Zergs did that, I did that. You've got like 10 Swarmos. Korean Zergs did that too. 10 Swarmos mass meter. Like this is, I don't know, sort of the same concept, except um, without the Swarmos. <laughs> but even most Terrans are used to making tanks. And with mech, just blindly. No. Um, yeah, they're just used to making tanks. Because for a while it's on host and most of the time now it's Broach, Hydro, Viper. So by default, the turn will make tanks. And even if they scan and see you're doing a mutable like this, almost every time they'll already have, um, they'll already have some tanks. But yeah, this is, I just wanted to show a build I sometimes do that works quite well against mech. And I do use this in tournaments all the time when I play against mech. And it's, quite effective in my experience. Of course this game is not an ideal example because I did defend a Hellboat push, I was ahead, so I just wanted to show it though. And now I want to show a game good. quick bio game against him too. Is everyone out of game? Perk. <laughs> you can kick him if you want. No, no, he's he's out. Okay. I don't really like corruptor approach being D. I think the style is kind of appeasable by tanks. Um Crypto spanning against Terran? Yeah, um, yeah. I think it's okay. I don't think it's, I don't, I would never do it every game. Like, 
I, I think Jack does that. I watched some of his games before, and he seems to like doing it most games. And if you do it most Game games, like turn, they could expect it, and they can open tanks. But if you're a player, like especially if you're playing a tournament, and you're usually a muta player, it can be nice to mix it in. Because it's quite effective if they don't open tanks. But I agree with you that I think if they know it's coming and they go tanks, it's it's very hard to win with it. If they play defensive, they get like a high supply a marine tank push. It's really quite hard to win with that style. So while I have used it before, it's not something I would recommend to do as a as a standard build. I also think uh, not that good because you lack the mobility of the muta, the ability to harass the turn can expand more freely. Yeah, it doesn't allow you to stay on the composition for a while. It's more of like a transitional thing. Either you you open with it and you do a timing and you try and kill them straight up. Like if they do if they do their standard push against mutas, it can be you can be in a really good spot because it's it's quite good against like the standard three base rally push. Like, if they weren't expecting it. But, you do have to transition out of it. Like, you can, I think what Dark Tech does, and this is what I did when I did it, is if you can't tell them straight up, you have to transition quickly into Ultras. But you are safe when you're going into Ultras. Because while it is lacking mobility, it's a stronger composition for a straight up fight. Until a page gets pretty good for them. Yeah, it's an army killing army. It's not a, it's not a mobility army. It's for fighting straight up. That's 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 right. So this game I went to a Muta. It's the game before the mech game I just showed him. Showed you guys. That's why he did probably make more rankings last game. And he's doing a similar kind of elevator. But I saw this with my group, so I feel comfortable. What I do is I target the meta usually. Just so you can't keep it there. Yeah, I always take the... Sorry, I dropped my webcam again. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, so, usually I do take the in-base natural. Sometimes I wouldn't, like if I'm playing against Protoss, sometimes, and I want to go quick through base. Sometimes I agree, it can be a good choice to get your the natural up here. But specifically this game, especially because I'm going to base meta, I obviously want to take the in-base one so I can defend my ramp with queens. But yeah, it is different. And sometimes you can take the one out there. I'm planning on taking a quick third anyways. Mm. Well, at this point, you're ahead because the meters are going to attack, I mean, clean up this, and he's and has to then have to make a lot of turrets, and his third can be delayed by meter lane for a long time, but which is more about three. Yeah, for sure. But this is just, also I want to tell you um, what I do with my meters. Like even though, of course, I am a headache again. Like, obviously, if I had more time to figure out replays, I would have picked a different replays that were more even at the start. But I just wanted to show the general concept, not not exactly saying this is an ideal replay to show you this, because these are just two ones that were on the second already. I feel like the base meter is kind of weak versus uh, 11 11 3 Reaper Hellion into like Banshee Hellbat pressure because you can actually take a lot of damage before you even get the meter yeah. out. Yeah, that's why I don't do it on most maps. And I think it's safe against that on this map because you can, um, you just don't take your third. And obviously, if you do that, they know you're doing like a two base meter. But it's still effective because they don't have any anti air if they're doing that build. So what you do is you just sit on top of your ramp, make make a spine, and you have your queens there with transfuses. And then you're pretty safe, even though like you can't take your third. You're at least not gonna die in your natural with your natural. That is different on other maps because you don't have a high ground on most maps. But on this map it is pretty safe to do that. Hey, I'm going to bed, guys. Scarlet, thanks for this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. All right, have a good night, guys. This one must have changed. Rush Hydra Viper. You disconnected from your channel. Yeah, that's also the other option. The main option to come against mech. And what you do with that is you just you can't you can't be too defensive with that. Like you have to continuously do attacks. So you do like a rush attack if you want, otherwise you do like a rush hydra attack at first. And you tech at the same time. You go into Viper Rush Hydra and you keep attacking. You keep doing attacks. 
if you just wait when you're maxed, like if you're maxed, you have to attack what you're doing that. You can't just play defensive. And you also have to have follow-ups. So if you're doing Roach Hydra, you can't just follow up with another Roach Hydra attack unless you did a ton of damage. You generally like want to do a Roach Hydra attack, follow it up with a Roach Hydra Viper attack, maybe follow it up with Broodlords and Hydras and Roaches, and just keep doing different attacks that are stronger each time. I've seen a lot of Zerds uh, trying to blind counter me on ladder beat with them. They all keep going like uh, two base Roach pushes, uh, Titus's, Grobs, this kind of thing. Yeah, I don't I don't like that because well I just don't like blind counters in general. Except for maybe in tournaments sometimes. Because I'm playing a lot of like a hard hard mech counter builds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um this question first bio one's like a time to take that fourth. Usually I would say take it as soon as you can. Like as soon as you're getting your mutas out. Obviously it's different this game because I did open I did open two days muta. So it's a little bit later than usual, but generally I'd say as soon as you get your previous set to fire up your upgrades going and your bailing messed up, and your gas switch is then take it. So it should be like just finishing it around the time where the first tree base trade hook is getting to your base. So it should be finishing around like 11 minutes or so. This game is later because I did go to base music, and my economy was less than usual though. Yeah. Yeah, I don't zone it until I feel safe. So either if I get it really early, I drone it before I defend, or if his attack is just coming, I wait till I can hold the initial pushes before I drone it up. So this game, and this is notable on this map, is what I did was I kept my mutas back here, and it's going to be really annoying for the Terran because on this map especially, you have to defend all this area back here against mutas, and all this area, and it's just so exposed, just because of how the bases are laid out. So, um, yeah, yeah, and I thought he was pushing across the map. I think I might have had a link out here and saw it, but, um, so what I was thinking is, once I know he's pushing like that, I want to cross with his mutas, and I just want to keep making a lot of banings and stuff at home. So I might have sacrificed this fourth, just because I am getting my mutas, I am doing damage with the mutas. So as long as I defend, I I'm, I feel good, even if I lose my fourth, because I'm getting damage with the So, yeah, I should be making Link Banning here. Hopefully. 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 Okay. I guess I didn't listen to myself. Cause I'm. But yeah. Um. So now I decide to retreat with my meters because I want to clean this up. And if I don't bring my meters back to fight with this, first it's a hard time to get with mine and blue mines ahead, and I have no idea what that was. Um. But yeah, I don't I wanna make sure you get the shoot, but I wanna make sure you get the shoot, but I'm gonna press my button on the computer's phone.